So you wanna get better at street photography. Good, congratulations, you made it here. Uh, before we get started, if this video helps you out at all, please do consider hitting that sub button. It's free for you and it helps me out a bunch. So without further ado, let's get into it. Rule number one, edit what you publish. I see this all the time. I think we get a little bit excited. We come home, we've got 30 of what we think are good images and we start hitting Instagram with them. If you're coming home after a couple of hours shooting with 30 great images, you're kind of doing something wrong. And I think that something wrong is asking yourself which images are actually good. It's a huge important part in our processes to curate our work and you know, you shoot everything. Of course, especially if you're shooting digital, there's no reason not to photograph everything that you see. You can delete it later. You do not have to publish it. What this will do for us is just allows us to question what is good? What makes this image good? Is it good? If you're coming home with, I don't know, let's say 50 images, pick your favorite five or you know, publish your best one, however you want to do it, but start curating your images and asking yourself, which of these images is good? What makes it good? And it will also start to instill in your brain, what am I gonna look for next time? Or you know, when I go out shooting next time, oh, I can do this a little bit better. So yeah, really start to ask yourself, you need to be your toughest critic because your best friend and your mom aren't gonna be, unfortunately. So start being hard on yourself, start curating your work, and uh, yeah, photograph everything unless you're shooting film, because yeah, yeah, you gotta have like Elon money, but yeah, curate. Step number two is get out of your comfort zone. Find the thing that makes you a little bit uncomfortable. Find the thing that makes you say, ah, oh, I find it really hard to do that and go and do it. Don't do it all the time because it's probably gonna make street photography not that enjoyable for you anymore. But what I like to use is the sort of one and three rule. So for every three hours that I'm shooting, I will shoot one hour of something that is sort of directed learning, the thing that I want to get better at. Or you could do it, you know, one in every three days that you shoot, one in every three weeks, however you want to put it. But that just helps uh, you just move forward on these things that you don't want to do. And even if you don't want to shoot that style, it's still going to make you a better photographer. So it could be street portraits. Uh, sit out to do one in the day. You don't need to set the bar really high. I think what a lot of people do is they leave the house thinking like, oh, it'd be really nice to shoot 10, 15 street portraits today. But you don't need to do that. Shoot one, go and get it, feel accomplished, and then move on with your day, move on with your shoot, keep photographing, and the joy of street photography is gonna take you around. Or maybe you get that one, start to feel more confident, and you're like, I'm gonna do another one. Pick, pick easy subjects. I'm just gonna stick on the street portrait thing for an example, but you know, find someone that you feel comfortable approaching, find someone that doesn't look like they're in a rush, find someone that's, I don't know, your age or someone that you feel like you can relate to so that maybe that conversation is easier. But finding those things and having directed learning, knowing what to go after is what's gonna excel your photography. And it, like I say, if even if you're not looking to shoot that particular style all the time, that it's all gonna bleed into each other and it's just gonna make you a better photographer. So stop making excuses. It is hard, it's hard for all of us. Uh, some things are easier than others for, for different people, but uh, I don't think there's many people that start off in street photography or try to get better in street photography and just feel comfortable the whole time. So push yourself. Now this next step might be a little bit more controversial, but it's something I stand behind a lot, and that is to shoot black and white. Please do let me explain. If you do already shoot black and white, go shoot color. Do the one and three thing, or go shoot color for a month, whatever you gotta do. Again, that will help you get better at your photography, even if it's not the style you want to shoot in. However, shoot black and white. The reason why I say that is because I think what is often lost and what you know separates, again, what could be a, a good photo to an amazing photo is background. And it's something that we don't often get to consider. Obviously we're on the street, we don't get to plan all of our shots, but in black and white, you have to a lot more. And the reason for that being is color pops. And you know, if someone's wearing red or a lime green, they'll pop off the background often automatically. And we don't have to consider what's behind them. However, with black and white, a lot of those things turn to gray. Of course, the dark colors and the black is gonna stay black, the light colors and, and, and the whites are gonna stay white everything else in the middle is gonna to turn to gray and you really have to start to consider what is in your background and using things um, like framing, et cetera, to allow your subject to stand out from the background. There's a second reason too, and this one's a little bit more meta, but I just think more people understand color and you have to also assume that not everybody is a photographer, especially if you're publishing your work to Instagram where you might have a large following or you've got family members and friends who aren't photographers and maybe they don't even understand things like color theory but they are gonna see red and they're gonna be like, I like red and they're gonna click like on your photo. So you're actually in a way 
garnering this sort of false survey on whether the photo is actually good or not. So use black and white. Again, if you don't want to shoot in black and white and color is your thing, doing a month of it anyways or doing one in every three is going to help your photography. You're going to be able to take the techniques that you learned by doing this other thing and, and bring it back to your style or the thing that you prefer to shoot. So shoot black and white, super important in my opinion. There's a whole bunch of other things. There's lighting, Is you're gonna look at lighting different, you're gonna see the world in a different way once you start shooting in either, either monochrome or, or color. So do it. Now our fourth step is going to be look at books. I know this ancient medium of things that people don't read and look at anymore. Hey, what you reading for? However, there's a wealth of knowledge in them. Knowledge. And especially the older ones. The older ones stood the test of time because they're good. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff on Instagram. There's also a lot of not so good stuff on Instagram. So if you don't exactly know what you're referencing or you're gonna find yourself buying into trends and stuff and not for the better, uh, yeah. It's not a great place to get your references. Books are great, and uh, don't just buy them and leave them on the bookshelf. Uh, take from them, study them, copy them. You, your photos are gonna end up different anyways. If you reference someone's photo, if you're not in the exact same location with the, you know, the exact same person walking by, your photo is probably gonna look quite different. But what you can do is you can start to deconstruct those things. You can flip through them and you can start to ask yourself, why do I like this photo? Why do I like this photographer's photos? And uh, yeah, you can start to replicate a few of those things. We're quite limited in our ways of gear and approaches on the street, so you're gonna end up copying someone anyways, and hey, uh, still like an artist. Very good book, by the way. Not affiliated at all, but it's a good one. Uh, so use books. There's a lot of stuff in here that you don't find online also. We all know a couple of famous photos from a few famous photographers, but there's also so much extra in these books that often isn't catalogued online and we certainly don't see on Instagram. And uh, yeah, like I say, they stood the test of time for a reason, so use them. Well, looks like we got ourselves a reader. Now my fifth tip to you is limitations. Yeah, we've all heard the carry one lens thing, but there's so many limitations that we can make, so I want to extend on that. Uh, if you have the world of creativity at your fingertips, you know, you're at the street, you've got your camera, it's a little bit overwhelming sometimes. And, and again, we're here to get better at street photography. And one way that we really want to do that is, again, focused learning. What am I gonna learn today? Um, it's much like stepping out of your comfort zone. Find something that you wanna stick to for the day. You, again, use the one and three rule, whatever. Set something, limit yourself to a certain shutter speed, limit yourself to a certain aperture, limit yourself to street portraits only, limit yourself to a particular part of town, limit yourself if you're gonna shoot for the week, uh, shoot at nighttime, or, or if you've got one day, you can pick the day with the worst weather, it's like I haven't shot out in the rain for you know six months, whatever it is, find a thing to limit yourself you will learn. Again, you get to take those things back and apply them to the rest of your photography. You will become a better photographer. So limit yourself. Don't do it to a point where you're not enjoying street photography anymore. You still want that freedom. It's just that you, you, know, you still want to follow the jazz and uh, you know, go out and have fun and, and, and be able to sort of roll with the punches as we all love to do out on the street. But limit yourself and uh, yeah, have fun doing that. And finally, go out and shoot. It's the, one of the best ways you're gonna go learn. However, like I said, we're all here to get better at street photography, not to learn how to go shoot. We all know how to do that. We push the button out on the street. But yeah, go out with directed learning. Use those tips. If any of those tips help you today, please do hit that subscribe button or share with a friend who maybe will also enjoy this video. Helps me a lot because I want to be able to buy some ramen with making these videos one day and still give them to you for free. All you need to do is watch. So thank you. And uh, yeah, comments and everything down below, you know the story. Peace.